Hello and welcome to the second uh, version 4.0 beta video. So in this video I'm going to talk specifically around models and instances. Uh, modeling in Hybyte hasn't really changed in a number of releases across 2.0, 3.0, you know, minor improvements. 4.0 is a big shift and I'll show you some of the uh, early stuff that's in the beta, also kind of where we're going. So without further ado, let's jump into modeling. So I'm going to create a model. Uh, in this case what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to model a conveyor. And you'll see the UX is similar but a little different. So I'm going to add a bunch of attributes. So speed, um, status, motor, and I'm going to call this one vibration sensor. So let's assume that we put on like MQTT based or something, kind of retrofitted a sensor onto the conveyor to try to detect failures through ML. So you can add a bunch of attributes. You know, we have, it's a little different. We would call internal types or our normal data types, model types, that would be a child model. And then an object now, that's new. So we're trying to think of the names. This might be confusing for some folks. But uh, what I want to do is I'll set this to object type. And what that means is prior to in 3X, if you wanted to create hierarchy models, you needed a child model. That's no longer true in 4.0, right? So we can have what we call inline hierarchy in model definitions, which means it's just hierarchy that's inlined part of the model definition. It's not a child model. So I've set this to object, which gives me that ability. And then what I'm going to do is um, volts, amps, temp, we'll say. And I'm going to create that. And I'm going to leave all the data types to any. You know, required is still there. Array is still there. We do have a new field called nullable, which means that we'll pass, you know, attribute name null through the system. We'll allow that to flow. So interested in getting beta feedback on that, if that's a useful feature or not. Um, so there's my model definition. Now, what I wanted to do is actually create vibration center sensor. Let's say that is a child model. So I'm going to reuse that in other model definitions. So what I want to do, so I'm not going to inline it. I want it to be part of um, its own definition. So in here, I'll do FFT1, FFT, Fast Fourier Transform 2, Average Hertz. We'll call that good for now. Then I'll go back into the conveyor. And here, I'll set this to a model type. And I'll select the vibration sensor model. All right, so I've got my initial model definition. Now I want to go create an instance. And this is where you'll see quite a bit of the, the change. So conveyor 1, set to the conveyor model. Now the first thing you'll notice is that the tree is, I, I would say this tree of the instance definition is fully expanded. So what does that mean? It includes all the inline attributes, including the hierarchy. But the child model definition I created also shows up as well, right? So what I have now is the opportunity to, in a single instance, define this whole thing if I want, or I could break it into child instances or child objects, and I'll show you how that, that works as well. But before, I would have needed you know, a parent instance and a child instance for the motor definition, a child instance for the vibration sensor, all these extra artifacts. And the biggest change in 4.0 now in beta is you don't need that. I could have a single instance definition that's composed of you know, inline hierarchy in its own model definitions. And then I can choose how I want to represent that instance standalone or, or break it up. Uh, the biggest difference, I think, between now and beta is uh, right now this hierarchy, uh, this composition, what I'm calling, I'm composed of the vibration sensor model, requires hierarchy. In release, it won't. So you'll have the option to make this, uh, like these attributes, inline with the idea that maybe you have an asset info model that's the same across all your model definitions. You would inline those, so you'd have like asset location, name, type, et cetera, that are inherent, you think of it as inherent inheritance, it's really composition. And then you would see those inline and there'd be some, there'd be a certain color or some way to know that, hey, this is a chunk of attributes that come in from the asset information model. So pretty cool, a lot of flexibility in how you can pull these things together. Aside from that, it's pretty similar, right? So I can go in, I've got an OPC server, conveyors, I'll pull down conveyor one. And what I can start to do is just drag and drop. So I can drag into the tree, I can go into the outline view and see the definition of all these things. Uh, and what I'm just gonna do real quick is just drag some of these in. Now motor is a piece of the hierarchy, right? I'm gonna skip that and I'm gonna fill in uh, the volts and amps and all that directly. And I don't have to do that necessarily. Uh, and I'll show you why in a second. Uh, temperature. Okay. So if I, you know, if I go and create this and I do a test read, things are looking pretty much like they used to. This is all simulated data, so nothing uh, terribly useful there. A lot of similar values. 
Uh, what you will know is notice is that we do have every attribute has has two types now. It has a reference type and an expression type. Reference just means it's a straight reference, just I/O. We go do the read or write. Maybe we do a little bit of casting, but there's no JavaScript. There's no logic that needs to occur. Uh, expression, on the other hand, means there's JavaScript, and I'll I'll show this in a minute. But you can opt into the use of JavaScript now, and the reason for that is mostly performance. Uh, it's going to be faster to do this, but even on the JavaScript side, we've made things faster, and I'll show that in a second. Uh, and then we get to the vibration sensor. So here, uh, I'm going to do this a little differently. What I have is in my OPC server, I actually have a vib the vibration sensor as part of the hierarchy. And if I go in there and expand it, you can see by name, some of these attributes match. So rather than drag this into FFT1, for example, I'm going to drag this into the root. And what we're going to do is go read this thing, and then we're going to do a name-by-name -name comparison to match this up. So if I find FFT1 in the payload of this thing as an attribute, I'm going to map it. And that prevents me from needing to map each individual one. right? So you can kind of see that that's pretty cool. The other thing I can do is, um, oops, for, for whatever reason, if I do want to override one of these things, I can allow that name matching, and then I can go in and override. So here I'm going to say FFT, FFT2 is actually not going to get the value from the parent. Uh, it's going to fill on its own, and you'll see the value will change. So that's pretty cool, cool, right? That's a lot of control. If you do have name match and payloads, you don't have to go back and individually represent all those. Uh, so I'm going to get rid of, I'll just leave that as is. So that's, I mean, that's a really quick view of a lot of the flexibility we have in modeling. We, you know, we're going to kind of continue to work on this UI, get feedback from beta users, probably put some more iconography in the, uh, in the tree to make things clear as to what they are and provide some more cool features there. Uh, one thing to note on the expression stuff. So if I change this to expression, I go back in and look for speed. One thing you'll note is that in 4.0, we require return statements and expressions. So you will have to write return, and then it functions just as you thought. Or you, you would think from before, you can divide by 100, that kind of stuff. And you'll see that changed. Um, if, you went, if and when you migrate over from 3x to 4x, we're not going to put return statements in your expressions because that's messing with your code, and we don't know how to do that. So what we're going to do uh, is when you migrate, you're going to see this legacy execution mode enabled which means we do not require return statements and everything will work as you expect. You'll then be able to turn this off and then go fix you know, any, any of these references that, that, uh, that need fixing. Now the reason for this is twofold. It's kind of bad form to not require return statements. It's confusing code. We probably never should have done it before, but it's a little bit of a JavaScript hack that allowed us to do it. Second fold is uh, before when we evaluated instances, every single attribute got its own JavaScript environment that was run, that was built, the JavaScript was run, we got a result back and tear it down, would tear it down. That's pretty slow. Uh, so now with this new mode, when this is off, execution of the instances, especially with JavaScript, is probably 5 to 10x faster. So there is incentive to go, when you're ready, uh, turn the switch off and uh, get some speed improvements. Uh, the last thing I want to show is the initialization block. So this is new. If you have legacy mode on, there's no init block. When you turn this on, there's an initialization block. And the way to think about this is, this will run uh, before any of the read or execution of the instance. It's kind of like a constructor. Um, so if I do this, variables dot my variable is equal to 1.2, and this syntax will be in the uh, in the user guide. And I change this to my var. Boom! Right, I take what's in the initialization block. So the requirement we had was that some folks, you know, I want to calculate speed and then I want to use that value when I go to calculate status. That gets pretty complex when you start creating dependencies between attributes. So we've, this is our first answer to that. To say, well, maybe you want to do something in the initialization block and then you can use that value in all of your attribute expressions. Um, you can do reads in here, right? So this isn't uh, held to just uh, IO, I mean, um, constants or default values, I can actually do a read in here and have that th flow through as well. So you have quite a bit of control over uh, how this is done. We have some other grander ideas for the initialization block, like allowing you to actually initialize the instance in here through code. Uh, we don't want to require that. It's more of an advanced user setting, but some interesting stuff there for power users. Uh, less drag and drop kind of stuff. 
I think that's pretty much it. There's still going, a lot going into modeling. The whole composition piece we think is going to be very powerful. We want to better represent that in the UI. Uh, in pipeline specifically, I think I talked about it when we, I demoed the validation stage, but we'll have a model stage. The difference between instance modeling today, where you're pulling together data from multiple sources, OPC UA tags, SQL, et cetera, in a single read and shaping it, versus modeling and pipelines. Modeling and pipelines will be restricted to the event that's coming into that stage, where you can remap it into a model definition. You won't be able to do initial uh, or additional I.O. to pull more data in. You'll have to get all your data ready, and then you kind of reshape it through a model stage. But uh, that'll we'll be working on that for release as well. So definitely grab the beta, give it a shot. There's a lot new here. Send us some feedback. There's plenty of time to incorporate that. So thank you.